course of his collegiate career as a head coach. Previously took Charlotte to the College Cup Championship match. That was his last match in 2011 as the 49ers head coach before getting the job at Stanford. The Cardinal 4-0-2, sharing the number two ranking in the country with Wake Forest, according to the United Soccer Coaches Top 25 and at San Diego State at 2-4-1. Though, really, there were three other matches this year where they were first best on the pitch and second best on the scoreboard. So some unfortunate results for them. As we get ready to roll. First touch will be taken by the Cardinal in the white uniform. San Diego State in black, and we are underway. Hey, thank you for joining us on the Pac-12 Network. Kevin Dan on the call. Jackson Hasselness, our technical director, our producer, our everything extraordinaire behind the scenes. This is Isaiah Lewis, if he can get on to it. He can't, but Fodre momentarily won it before he gets blasted back to Frank. So it was a goalless draw for Stanford against UCLA, a match that they really controlled in the second half, especially out shooting the Bruins 15 to two, but could not produce a goal. And you saw in the open that they very nearly scored in the final 10 seconds of that match or so, but it took just one point from the match. Meanwhile, for San Diego State, they were much more positive than Cal for much of that match in Berkeley on Thursday, but they lost 2-0 despite producing 17 corner kicks. They were not very clinical in the final third, something that Ryan Hopkins was lamenting after the fact, saying we just need to be more incisive on those corner kicks and a little more quality necessary in the final third. Keegan Hughes, the veteran center back, sending it forward. There's Fisher, dispossessed by his opposite six, Corbis. And uh, he might have taken a boot to the chest. They are calling for the training staff, and Corbis is writhing in pain on the ground. Here it is. Gets tangled up right about there. He's holding his chest. Might have gotten the wind knocked out of him inadvertently. And a sporting tap from Liam Doyle. Corpus, a, a native of the Bay Area, about 25 minutes south of here in San Jose. Corbis making his second start of the season. Started one match last year. And he'll come back on, so that's good to see. Clary bringing that down. Will Clary, Clary, excuse me, uh, an outside back for the Cardinal. He had never played fullback in his life until training camp this year with the Cardinal. He was an attacking mid by trade. Jeremy Gunn told him, well, we're kind of stacked in the midfield, but if you're willing to learn a new position, we might have some minutes for you elsewhere. And he was more than willing to learn, and he's been an everyday starter at outside back for the Cardinal. And he's done a nice job, and he's really impressed Jeremy Gunn this year in the early going. There is Will Cleary, the, the freshman from Windsor, Connecticut. He has started all seven matches now. As that ball leaves the park, another throw in for Joe Deleuze in San Diego State. Looking for Lewis, gets ahead to it. Fodre running on. There's CJ Fodre. Leads the team with eight points this year. And Riley doing a nice job of keeping that in play. 
Doyle bringing it down. Here's Purchase on the counter for the Cardinal. Out wide to Fletcher Bank. He's been a premier table setter for the Cardinal this season. Tingy going to ground does not get a whistle. Now San Diego State on the counter. Cleary goes over the head of Liam Doyle there and that one knocked out of play. Here's Silly, part of that engine room for the Cardinal. He and Mark Fischel, Fisher, the center midfielders for the card. Doing a great job. And Jeremy Gunn very pleased with them. Nice crowd on hand. Fans enjoying themselves here in the early going. As the sun is starting to peek through some more. It was rainy earlier today. But sunny now, according to the weather app, should stay dry until about 5 p.m. So we'll get this match in without any anticipated precipitation. Tingy looking into the box and Purchase was trying to snap header that one towards the face of goal. Not sure he actually made contact with it as we get a good look at Jacob Castro. He's done a great job for San Diego State, State in net. First Aztec keeper to be named first team all Pac-12 in 15 years when he earned that honor last year. And they're expecting more out of him. Right now, Ryan Hopkins saying probably a couple of goals that they shouldn't have conceded. He's also made just some incredible saves this year. Card on the move. Here's Purchase, goes to ground, trying to stay on the ball. Looking ahead for Rami Jaridli. As, like Stanford, San Diego State has made some changes to their starting 11. Normally it's been Austin Brummett starting up top alongside Fodre and Donovan Rue, had, who had started all seven matches coming into this one. But Donovan Rue left out of the starting 11. His older brother, Tevin, since graduated. As you take a look at the updated 11, Tevin Rue, as we talked about, scored the game winner in overtime against the Cardinal last year in his senior season. That was part of a 2-0 start to conference play for San Diego State. They were ranked in the top 15, and then the rest of the season happened. They dropped their last seven Pac-12 matches and missed the NCAA tournament. Tingy. Chip one in, headed out by Cretier. Oh, Jacob Castro, and he handled that one right on the edge of the box. It'll be a free kick for the Cardinal. Uh, Castro never be faulted for a lack of bravery. He has been caught off his line a couple of times this year. Let's have another look see at this one. Castro was sure he was going to win that one and he leapt for it. And it will result in a set piece for the Cardinal just outside of the box. That's Will Riley over the ball for the Cardinal. 
They'll play it for Bank. Back to Riley. Has that one deflected. Bank back in. Purchase. Turning. Shooting right at Castro. So Castro makes the save. Atones for the early sin. And Purchase with a nice bit of work there. Getting the shot on target. Corbis looking to play that one forward. Here's Fisher. Going wide to Tingy. Now here's Bank. Overlapping run from Tingy into the box and cleared by Noah Cretier. The lose, volleying it out of danger for the Aztecs. Fodre almost got there. San, San Diego State is going to do a good bit of defending to start this one. Cardinal wanted a foul called on Fodre there. They don't get it. <laughs> Katsaros. Good ball out to Deleuze. Nice one-touch pass, freeing up Henry Smith hasty via Fodre. Good bit of work by C.J. Fodre, part of that monster top rank recruiting class for the Aztecs, but now it's the Cardinal on the go with Bank. Fletcher Bank to his left, and it's touched over the crossbar by Castro for a corner kick. Good shot on the move from Fletcher Bank. Forced Castro to make a play on it. That might have been going high, but you don't want to take a chance on that. And so the Cardinal will get a corner here in the 11th minute. Number 20, will, will Riley will take it. And a product of the Atlanta United system. Played with Atlanta United 2 in the USL Championship League. Before coming to the farm, highly thought of youth player into the box, looking back post. And the card will go the long way around. Another nice one-touch pass from Fodre. It's been so fun to watch this year. We are going to have a whistle because uh, it'll be a throw and went out. Now Fodre off to a smashing start. He is a product of uh, the San Diego Loyal Academy. It's a, a USL team. That has involvement from Landon Donovan, or great U.S. national teamer. And his mom said, uh, Fodre talking about the opportunity to work with Landon Donovan. He was saying, my mom tells me every day she can't believe I'm being coached by Landon Donovan. And that certainly is quite the special thing as a youth player to be able to Learn from a guy like that. Scored one of the biggest goals in United States World Cup history. Or one of the most exciting ones at the very least, that game winner against Algeria. And topped the group stage in 2010. Right at the death of that match. They don't score, they don't get to the knockout stage. Deleuze trying to play one over the top for Fodre. Can't quite get there. 
Good bit of clearance from Keegan Hughes. He and Noah Adnan form a very nice center back pairing for the Cardinal. A defense that has conceded just twice this year. Once in a 3-1 win over SMU, and then once in a 1-1 draw at Creighton. And it was just a smashing match. So fun to watch. Jeremy Gunn this has nothing but great things to say about that stadium, just a, a great place for college soccer. Said that could have been a five-all match. Just so many chances produced both ways. The Cardinal got a goal in the first minute of that match, like 41 seconds in. And then Crane took it to him in the second half. And Jeremy Gunn really kind of pleased with the display of college soccer in that one. Another corner here for Will Riley in Stanford. Coming up on the quarter hour mark. I'll play it short. Bank will send it in. He's got Fisher, tries to poke it along. Back on it, Bank. Crosses on. Header Hughes, and not too threatening for Castro, who calmly deals with it. Castro, a guy who growing up was all about the Huskies. He's from Spanaway, Washington. His dream was to go to UW. He went to UW, didn't get a lot of playing time. Transferred to San Diego State, and he's been fantastic for the Aztecs. Mentioned he's made some really good saves. Well, San Diego State also played at Creighton. And for my money, Castro has the best save of college soccer this season that I've seen. To keep it, I believe, a one-goal match at the time, just I don't. his reaction after spilling a rebound to save the second shot, uh, you have to find it if, if it's clipped somewhere. Unbelievable save from Castro. Nice switch and brought down neatly by Tingy. And a roll out for a goal kick here in the 17th minute. We'll get our first sub. And it's Austin Brummett. Part of that big recruiting class for San Diego State, part of New York Red Bulls Academy, who actually made his pro debut at 15 years old in the USL Championship with Tacoma Defiance when he was part of the Sounders Academy. That made him the youngest player to debut in the USL Championship. Had a bit of an unfortunate moment earlier this year. Brummett missing a penalty kick in the first minute against Omaha. Eventually lost that match 1-0. And they were by far the superior side in that match. And it's just cruel how soccer goal goes, where you can be much better than the other team and still lose. That was one of those instances. Katsaros able to make sure that through ball didn't get through. Bank laying it off. It's Keegan Tingey looking for purchase in the box and couldn't link up with him. So San Diego State, you have that loss. 1-0 to Omaha. They were up 1-0 in the final 10 minutes against LMU and then gave up two goals and lost to the Lions 2-1. And I, I know this isn't how it works, but this team could very easily be 4-2-1 right now. And then, of course, against Cal, they produced 17 corner kicks and ended up losing 2-0. So there have been quite a few times this year where they've been the better team for most of the match and have still taken the loss. This is Bowen, a Seattle native. Excuse me, San Clemente native. Katsaros from Seattle. And that will go wide of the mark. Oh, 
Matt Frank, a heck of a job in net for the Cardinal. I mean, the goals against average, sub 0 0.4. He has just been tremendous. You know, Jeremy Gunn saying just made some huge saves in that Creighton match. Like we mentioned earlier, Jeremy Gunn thought that could have been a 5-5 kind of match. It was 1-1. One, one. Outside of that match, you know, his main contributions, Gunn saying, have been just his steadying influence because the defense has been so strong in front of him. He hasn't had to make a lot of saves. Oh, almost at the edge of the six, looking for Will Riley, and Castro smothers it. So we really are in for a treat. A couple of top-notch keepers, a couple of very threatening sides. And match day two of the Pac-12 men's soccer season. Right now, the table topped by Cal. As Washington and Oregon State yet to play a conference match. Get a foul. Going against the Aztecs as Riley picks himself off the grass. Will Riley, one goal this year, one goal last year as a freshman. He's also competed with the US U-17, the team captain in an international tournament four years ago for the United States. Direct ball looking for Doyle. Here comes Fodre. He's worked really well along the right side, uh, left side of the field, I should say. A foul going on Stanford to stop that counter. To lose to take the free kick. Kelowna looking forward, trying to break the lines. And I don't go out of play. Boot takes a deflection. Cardinal trying to advance forward. Nice bit of work by Bowen. And perhaps something brewing here for the Cardinal. It's Purchase with space, carrying it towards the edge of the 18. Riley playing it forward. Cleary trying to cross it in. And blown up by Katsaros. Cardinal continuing to threaten here. Nice ball played into Cleary. Had a couple of options inside the six yard box. Purchase being one of them. Who, if you talk to Jeremy Gunn, he tell you he's quite unlucky last year that he didn't score. And then this year he had probably one of the luckiest goals you ever see. And deflecting a kick from a goalkeeper into the back of the net against UC Davis. Just, you know, guys just kind of run towards the keeper as they take a kick. Well, he deflected it into the back of the net, and that's his first collegiate goal. There's an Aztec down. It's Brummett. This will be whistled. Dead for the time being as they check in on Brummett. Uh, attending to his shin guard. Here's how it went down. A physical tackle there from Keegan Hughes. But no foul. 
More than midway through the first half, still goalless. The Cardinal have had the greater say of possession and chances as well in the final third. And has been their match to this point. The pitch tilted towards the Cardinal attacking half. Aztecs are going to make a sub. Not now, but soon. Looks like they want to make it now. Blake Bowen waiting to take the throw in. Now he'll throw it. So yeah, it's going to be Donovan Rue coming in at some point. Very soon. But first, this from Stanford. Clary chipping it into the box. <laughs> nice initial touch by Silly. He's going to get called for the foul of Corbis. <laughs> Corbis has taken a couple of knocks in this one. Earthquakes Academy product. Three star recruit. Got Saros. Nice ball, Brummett. Getting it into Fodre, who slipped as he took the shot. Otherwise, would have been able to get a lot more pace behind that attempt as he slams the grass, frustrated with himself there, because that could have been really juicy for the Aztecs. They do get a shot on target, but nothing more. Smith Hasty. So that was most dangerous piece of attacking from the Aztecs and the Cardinal right back in the edge of the area. Tingy taking a crack and right into the midsection to Castro. Thingy on that last attempt. A very reliable outside back. The senior from Danville. All Pac-12 honorable mention each of the last two years. <laughs> Riley fouled. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was a foul. They, they sounded the horn for the throw-in or the horn for the sub to be made, but I think that assumed that there was going to be a throw, and you cannot sub in on a foul. And so those subs will have to wait. And you're taking a look at Jackson Keel and Carlo Agostinelli, usually the starting forward tandem for Jeremy Gunn. First time all year, those two have come off the bench. Looking to create something different up top as now the subs will come on with the throw in. So there's Agostinelli and Keel for Stanford. Donovan Rue in for San Diego State alongside Arturo Chavez. So Corbis and Rami Jaridli taking a seat on the Ryan Hopkins bench. Coming out. For Stanford, uh, the forwards up top in Purchase and Doyle having a chat right now with Jeremy Gunn. Uh, Cardinal in search of some goals. They bagged 11 goals in their first four matches, just one over the last 180 minutes and counting now, north of 200 minutes after the one all draw at Creighton and the goalless tie against UCLA. So we're not going to say the well has dried up, but not quite the trend that the Cardinal was on earlier. Of course, the match is certainly tougher with Creighton and UCLA. Fisher. 
selecting Cleary. He'll carry it into space. Agostinelli trying to touch it back to him. Carlo still on it. And able to direct a shot on target, but not nearly the pace required to beat Castro. Carlo's been a lot of fun to watch this year. Great set piece taker for the Cardinal. Leads the Pac-12 in shots. Brummett working hard, finding to lose. Crosses on right to Frank. And Cardinal out on the counter quickly with Bank. Fletcher Bank still on it. In the box, it's Fletcher to the byline and winning a corner kick. Nicely done by Fletcher Bank. <laughs> Or not. Looks like it's going to be a goal kick. At first they pointed towards the corner flag and then he got overruled. Here's another look. And yeah. I mean, that's close, but yeah, I, I think that is the right call. Tristan Viviani is on. And Esteban Zepeda. So Viviani, a freshman from Redwood City, California, another Earthquakes Academy guy. Esteban Zepeda, product of Sacramento Republic FC. How about Sacramento Republic, huh? Getting to the U.S. Open Cup Finals, the USL side. Getting all the way to the championship match before losing 3-0 to Orlando City, but that was goalless well into the second half, if I remember correctly. It's a great display for Sacramento Republic, a, a team that I think had eyes on joining the MLS. Viviani, he's in the box, goes to ground, but certainly no penalty kick to be warranted there. Cretier back to Kelowna. Viviani normally is a defender for this team. He is up top right now. So a bit of a personnel change here for Ryan Hopkins. Who understands it's going to be a growing process for this very young team. Nice ball forward for Deleuze. Joe Deleuze, Georgetown transfer, won an NCAA title with the Hoyas. Smith hasty on the switch. Taken down by Zepeda. Rue. So the best spell of possession for San Diego State in the attacking half. Coming right now. 32nd, 33rd minutes, and Katsaros, not the right shape on that ball forward. As it comes to an end. But that was good stuff from the Aztecs, showing they can get on the front foot a bit. Smith hasty. Cardinal pressing high. San Diego State able to get out of pressure there. Long ball forward. Hughes will take it back to Frank. Viviani going to get whistled there, and uh, he's going to get booked. Very physical challenge. He'll get shown the yellow in the 34th minute. There is still a Cardinal player down. 
This is King of Tingy. Yeah. A little reckless there. Probably a deserving yellow. Adnan will take the free kick, the junior from Gaithersburg, Maryland. Tied for third on the team with three goals last year. He wore number 25 and took over the number left behind by Andrew Abrahamian. Who's had his spot filled by Will Cleary. So they lost Abrahamian, but more notably, Zach Ryan of Sandy Buda signed MLS contracts. Buda, a top 10 pick of the San Jose Earthquakes. Dave Siegel, Little Richmond, all impactful players last year. Bicycle kick for Agostinelli leads to a diving save by Castro. Oh, Agostinelli showing his creative flair in the box. It's popped up high. And put it on target. Really nicely done. Castro up to the task there. As you see it from Jacob's view. Great stuff both ways. That's a Subs set to come on. It'll be Javi Camargo in black for San Diego State. And Shane DeFlores in white for Stanford, replacing Will Riley. That is a like-for-like -like sub that they have traditionally made over the course of this year. And Brummett off in favor of Camargo. Camargo, another freshman, another impactful frosh who has a couple of assists this year. Oh. Deep throwing in the final third for San Diego State. And it's going to be thrown into the edge of the area. Camargo gets the first head to it. Silly the second. Another throw in for the Aztecs as we've got about 10 minutes to go before halftime. Nicely done there by Adnan stepping in front of that. Direction Keegan Hughes. Stepping in front of that one. Stay with San Diego State and Joe Deleuze. Appeared in 10 matches the year that Georgetown won the national championship in 2019. He was with them last year when they went to the College Cup. Washington representing the Pac-12 in the College Cup. Lost to Clemson in the National Championship match. Florida State making a, a deep run to the Elite Eight. Bit of a rough start for the Beavers this year. Washington making it a nice weekend for Washington against Michigan State in multiple sports. The men's soccer team defeating the Spartans 4-1 to one and then the football team taking care of 11th ranked Sparty yesterday on Montlake. And congrats to the Washington football team for getting into the top 20. Now number 18 in the AP poll. Good day of football around the Pac-12. And you'll hear about it at halftime of this one. Plenty of action before that as the rain starts to come down here at Laird Q. Earlier than anticipated. Viviani turned and saw the ref right in his face. Camargo a little heavy on that first touch, but still able to control it. Oceanside, California kid Camargo. A poor giveaway there. Chance to counter for the Cardinal. Silly. And that's a handball. 
And just grazed off his palm. The referee Frank Anderson all over it. And I'll use this free kick to send numbers forward. Kelowna used the first head to it. Now here's a Gostinelli. Looking for De Flores. Kelowna there, but that's it to Keel. Jackson Keel setting up De Flores. Top of the box, a Gostinelli drops it off. Silly was going to play that to Tingy, who had fallen behind the play. Silly didn't realize that Keegan wasn't coming with him. That really could have been something there for the Cardinal. Fisher, center of the park. The Cardinal back on it. That nod. Tingy. Patient in the attack, the Cardinal. Fisher chips it in. Agostinelli takes the shot. And that one shaped high and wide. Agostinelli, born in Paris, went to high school in London. And finished eighth in the Pac-12 in assists last year with five. Been a very positive player for the Cardinal. That's such technical ability. Castro on the goal kick. Viviani the first head to it. Looking to play one over the top. Can't find the feet of Agostinelli. Camargo thought he was fouled. Hughes thought about playing the switch. Almost sent a juicy diagonal ball, which he did earlier. Agostinelli. Getting in the way of that one. Brought down. Keel in the box. Uh, too many black kits to deal with there. A giveaway. The shot. Wide looking back post perhaps for Fletcher Bank. And I'll just go out for a goal kick. Shane DeFlores, the boot to it there. Another look for Shane DeFlores. Yeah, tried to shape that one back post. Uh, not really close to connecting with Fletcher Bank there. Chavez trying to slip one through for Camargo. Camargo trying to get there and Frank the first one to it. And this has been a first half largely controlled by the Cardinals. San Diego State a spell of possession here or there. One half chance with CJ Fodre who couldn't keep his footing. 
on what would have been likely a very lethal shot. It's been a lot of this from Stanford. Now shooting the Aztecs seven to one to this point. Hughes to Cleary. The converted outside back. Trying to get that one to Silly. And Cardinal player still down, and they will stop the action. That's Cam Silly, slow to get up, on a knee still. As the clock stops in the 44th minute. See what caused him this anguish. There it was, and, and might have just be a wind thing, or maybe something very uncomfortable. But he appears to have his wits about him now. Looks like we'll get some late half subs both ways. Zach Bowen looking to come on for the Cardinal, the freshman from Monte Serena in the South Bay. And replays Cam Cillian Beto Apollinar in for San Diego State, replacing Javi Camargo. So Bowen in for Stanford, Apollinar in for San Diego State. That'll hop out of play. Still time for another attack to be mounted or two, potentially for the Cardinal. And the same could be said for the Aztecs. If they are able to get on the front foot here in the final 80 seconds or so. Now throwing further up the pitch for the Aztecs. And further up some more. This will work just well for San Diego State. And again. Now you're in an area where you, you could have taken a long throw potentially from there. They get it into Apollinar. Kelowna trying to keep it in. Smith Hasty switching the point to Zepeda. We are throwing for Stanford. Got about 20 seconds to go here in the first half. They don't appear to be in any hurry. I think at this point, both these teams just be fine with it being goalless at halftime. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And that will do it for the first half. So, and then another college cup appearance in 2019. And a Pac-12 championship in the spring of 2021 officially goes down as the 2020 season. So San Diego State will have the first touch in the second half. We're just about ready for it. Minutes 46 through 90 coming up right now from Laird Q. We are underway. Let's do this. Yeah. Not a ton of scoring opportunities in the first half. Stanford had more of them, though. Look at our man in the middle of things, Frank Anderson. Kevin Dana with you here from... Larry Q. Kagan Stadium, Jackson Hasselness, our producer. And a set piece right off the bat for the Aztecs. 
Couple of guys over the ball. Could be Corvus. Could be Jaridley. It'll be Corvus. But won't be able to do much with it there. Smith hasty. Laying this off, chipped in. Oh, just missing the head of Fodre. Well, that uh, was pretty threatening off the set piece there. Again, talking with Ryan Hopkins after their loss to Cal, in which they produced 17 corners. Just need to have more incisiveness on those set pieces. It says we got a young team finding out kind of where players like certain things to happen. And it'll be a process for this team. This one headed just high. Oh, they had a great opportunity there. Rami Jaridli and Elias Katsaros right there. Inside the six, right at the edge of it, it was Katsaros heading it just high. Another look from Matt Frank. And again, Katsaros coming off a weekend in which he had three goals. Two against Denver headers off set pieces. Katsaros, the reigning national player of the week for his efforts. He had taken one shot his entire career leading up to last weekend. And Katsaros is a junior who, who has pretty much been an everyday starter for this team. Corbis is going to win a corner. And so it was Stanford who was asking all the questions in the first half just about. And it's been San Diego State doing the interrogating here early in the second. And Katsaros is coming off a, a great Weekend. He was the first Aztec to be named National Player of the Week by United Soccer Coaches. This will be Fodre, who's got a wicked left foot. He'll swing this one in near post. Was looking for the head of Brummett, couldn't quite get it to him. That was a pretty good ball in, though. Fodre's got it again. He'll send it in again. Headed away by Hughes. The Cardinal now with Riley getting pushed down. A smart foul there from San Diego State. Stymie the counter. And allow the Aztecs to get numbers back defensively. Fisher. Fodre can't keep it in the park. Clary will throw it in. No, he won't. It'll be the other Will, Will Riley. Back to Cleary. Tingy, nice first move there. On his right, over the head of Doyle, and a goal kick upcoming. Good initial move. Trying to get the flick on for Liam Doyle, but screamed well over his head, Tingy. The senior from Danville. Earthquakes Academy guy. Trained with the Earthquakes first team in 2017-18. Was also a club teammate of Cam Silly. They both went to De La Salle High. Doyle. Getting the start today. Looking for Purchase, who takes a spill in the box. But Frank Anderson 
Not awarding anything there. Bowen. The junior still on the ball. Around a triangle of Cardinal defenders. All too much weight on that one touch pass back for Jaridley. Cardinal having to replace a, a few players who you see on this graphic no longer with the team because they are in the MLS. Hosseini Buda drafted eighth overall by the Earthquakes. And he's joined there by Will Richmond, who signed a homegrown contract with San Jose. He came through their academy system, and Zach Ryan signed a homegrown contract with New York Red Bulls. In the MLS, if you come through the academy, you can sign as a homegrown player with the first team. And ask Jeremy Gunn about what's it like seeing all these guys get drafted out of your program to the MLS. And he said, you're just part of people's journey when you're a college coach. And you can only hope they enjoy their time with you when they're here. He had quite a few alums at the UCLA match on Thursday. Always cool. As a coach, he said to see your players continue to play on into the professional ranks and just happy and excited, proud of those guys that they're able to move on to new challenges in their life. The Earthquakes have taken quite a few Stanford players over the years. I think back about a decade with Adam John. Of course, uh, Richmond and Buddha recently. Oh, just missing the foot of Liam Doyle there. Doyle continuing on, but Castro will boot it away before Liam can get there. Fletcher Bank taken away by Rami Jaridley. And a chance here on the counter for the Aztecs. Rami to his left foot and pushed it wide. San Diego State, they've had a moment here or there. This is a team that can certainly produce a good bit of offense. Rami Jaridley just missing that one. San Diego State back on it, looking for Fodre. Trying to get around to that one along the byline, but shielded off nicely by the Cardinal defense. Will Cleary, Keegan Hughes there for the Cardinal. No add on. Looking to go over the top to Doyle. Bank. Here's Liam Doyle. Cretier. The defending man goes down in the box. No penalty. No Cretier. The freshman from Nice, France. Doing a nice bit of defending. He's actually played in a Europa League game. Eight minutes in a Europa League match. That's kind of the just the level below Champions League. You got top flight clubs that play in kind of the, the second best inter European championship. And he's played in a game. I mean, that is big time, big time experience. Has a passion and dedication for the game. Ryan Hopkins saying and just really pleased with what he's been able to bring. A little bit undersized as an out-and-out -out center back, but in this 3-4-2-1 system, he's kind of half center back, half outside back, and says Cretier just reads the game very well, and a phenomenal passer bringing maturity to that back line. He is a 21-year-old freshman. So about three years older than uh, most guys in their first year in college. Cretier, there he is, number five in a black kit. But brings such a calmness. And, and you saw it there, defending in tight spaces in the box against the Cardinal. A still goalless in the 56th. 
UCLA and Cal will be doing battle 4 p.m. on Pac-12 networks. The Golden Bears won their last two. Under new head coach Leonard Griffin is that will hop out of play for a goal kick for Castro. The Golden Bears a bit unlucky, three straight draws and at least two of those, they gave up a goal in the final four or five minutes. I did the Villanova match. They were up 1-0 until the 87th. And gave up another late goal. In which they were trying to work, nurse a 1-0 lead. Well, they've Gotten wins from their last two matches, taking the full three points against San Diego State. Bowen. Nice ball to Corbis. Looking to curl one for Fodre. Cleary. Carrying on. Kept it in. Liam Doyle now trying to get around Kelowna, but Kyle Kelowna not having any of it. Still Stanford, though, with Bank. Fletcher Bank to his left and deflected by Cretier. Nice shot block there for the French product. Nice back heel flick back to Smith Hasty. Silly now. This game getting stretched a little bit. Flag is up. Purchase offside. But it's opening up now. You like to see it. These two teams splitting last season's matches, both winning on home turf. San Diego State in overtime, which can't happen anymore in the regular season. No more overtime. We're done after 90 minutes. And Stanford uh, scoring early and often. Here at Larry Q. Kagan last October against the Aztecs, winning 4 0. Part of a 6 6 and 6 campaign for Stanford that saw them miss the NCAA tournament for just the second time under Jeremy Gunn. Played forward. A couple of Cardinal players run into each other, but here's Tingy. Keegan Tingy with it. Setting up Bank. Chipping it back post over the head of Riley. Cleared to momentary safety. Fodre. Nicely done by Keegan Hughes. The action picking up in this one considerably. Laid off for Cleary. Back from Fisher into the box. Purchase. Got a boot to it, trying to volley it in. And with the goal kick, we'll get a couple of San Diego State subs. Chavez and Viviani checking in. Fodre off, Corbis off. Certainly not the last we've seen from C.J. Fodre. It's the thing about college soccer, you are allowed one re-entry in the second half. Substitution patterns much more liberal at the NCAA level than they are at the FIFA level. Layton Purchase takes it down. And Castro has to hit it out of the park. Actually, it is kept in. I mean, it goes out of play, but I thought that was going to clear the seats. Castro. Former wide receiver in football in high school. He actually got offered by Washington State as a receiver. In the box. And blasted wide. Cam is silly. Couldn't shape it on target. But a lot of force behind that. Good work by Fletcher Bank to gain the end line. Get a cross off and then just off the top of the laces there for Cam Silly. But yeah, back to Jacob Castro, you, you saw a, 
him a little bit earlier. I mean, he's 6'4". He definitely has a wide receiver body. He was a punter for the high school team, as you might imagine as well. But was offered by Washington State to be a wide receiver for the Cougs in the other football. On the gridiron, Cretier. Worked off it by Fisher. Nicely done for Mark Fisher. Doyle. Still on it. Cutting back. Tries to center it. Silly. Bank does well to keep it in. This is Tingy. Hughes, well high. And another sub coming in for the Aztecs. And Zapata, who was a first half sub, will come on again in the second. Esteban Zapata replacing Joe Deleuz. Zapata from Lincoln, California. They'll stop the clock. Some of us uh, poker players might know the town of Lincoln, California for Thunder Valley Casino Resort. Cleary. Take the throw to Silly. Trying to bend one in for Bank, and that'll hop on out. Well, we've mentioned it. San Diego State has the number one recruiting class in the nation. And a lot of the guys you see on the screen, they have made an instant impact. We talked about Cretier. Isaiah Lewis got the start in the first half. We've seen a lot of Brummett. C.J. Fodre had the, the best shot of the match. Javi Camargo's gotten in, and then you add four transfers to it. Jules Anderson is out for this match, but he has started a lot this year. And you get the number one incoming class, according to Top Drawer Soccer. And, you know, for Ryan Hopkins, it's a little give and take. You're like, all right, coming off a winning season, should be able to build off that. But you have so many new faces. You're starting so many freshmen that you can't just say, all right, we should jump from eight wins to 11 or 12 wins. It doesn't always work like that. It, it's a process kind of thing. And it's hard to be process oriented instead of results oriented. But that's what you have to do with a young team like this. And Hopkins realizes that. But he's done a tremendous job with this program. And one thing is that if you're a San Diego State men's soccer head coach, you got pretty good job security. Lev Kirshner, got to be for Hopkins, was the coach for about two decades. And this is a program, San Diego State, that's been around since the 60s, since 1968. And Ryan Hopkins is only their fourth head coach. So you can expect Ryan Hopkins to be around for a while, especially he's gotten off to a nice start. Zapata had his kit tug there by... Fletcher Bank. There is Hopkins in the cap. Nice chat with him on Friday. Time for a hydration break for the skipper. Stanford getting ready to make a few subs. Not on this throw in. So again, they started Doyle and Purchase up top today when it had been Agostinelli and Keel through the first six matches. Agostinelli and Keel are going to be coming on shortly. Fletcher Bank working on the byline. And it'll be a goal kick. And with the goal kick, we'll get those subs in right now. So there is Agostinelli along with Jackson Keel and Shane DeFlores for Stanford. Javi Camargo on for San Diego State as it's silly alongside Fletcher Bank and Leighton Purchase coming off. Brummett, the man being withdrawn for the Aztecs. 
So Doyle still on for the time being. Played about 20 minutes here in the second half. Still goalless. Shots at half were 5-1 Stanford. Right now it's 13-2 Cardinal. So they've outshot the Aztecs 8-1 in this break, in this half. But the Aztecs got on the front foot there. And the space for Jaridley. Rami Jaridley can't keep it in. Dridley, the redshirt freshman, so not a part of this recruiting class. From Chino Hills, has a goal on the season. Cardinal quickly back on it and quickly back for another San Diego State throw. Fisher. Directing one for Tingy. Agostinelli out wide. Carlo gets the cross off. But it's Castro who was able to snag it. Viviani gets to it. It's taken to turf, no whistle. A sub kind of got in the mix here with Keegan Hughes. He took the ball away from Keegan Hughes. And Frank Anderson had to give him a stern whistle. I don't think his teammates mind that, though. Cardinal continuing to build in the attack. Tingy launches himself down. Clearly no foul. Worth the effort, though. Let's see if you can fake out Frank Anderson. In the 70th minute, the Cardinal continuing to pile on the attacking say, having the possession in the attacking half, but still not finding any answers in the final third. This could be it. Agostinelli, shot is blocked. Fisher, there's Agostinelli. And couldn't bend that one in as he picks himself up. This could turn into a, an overall frustrating weekend for the Cardinal. They were the much more positive team Thursday night against UCLA and only able to get one point out of that match in the goalless draw. And now they're going on 160 minutes of goalless soccer here this weekend at Larry Q. Kagan Stadium. And again, they've been the more positive side. Tingy, a heavy last touch. Zapata with the tackle. But still time for Stanford to rectify things. 
Or for San Diego State to get a goal off a counter here and take three points from the weekend. Fisher wide of the mark. Mark Fisher having a save from beyond 20 yards there. This is the 16th shot of the match. Trying to bend it in back post as we get some subs in. Jaridley and Viviani coming out. CJ Fodre is back on. Joe Deleuze back out there as well. There's Fodre. Four star recruit. Top 75 recruit overall by Top Drawer Soccer. Looking for Bowen, no, Zapata will get there. Zapata and Agostinelli able to get in front of that one. San Diego State with some possession here in the final third. Here's a space for Cleary. Baudre closing in on him. Stays in for De Flores. Shane dispossessed. They play on. Cleary with the left. Cleary goes to ground, and this will be a free kick just outside of the box. We're talking 18 and a half yards, and it'll be a Pretty much straight on. Here it is. Tripped up. Yep. There's the foul. Just missing out on a penalty. And it's close to goal, but this is so tough to, to bend over the wall and tuck it underneath the crossbar from 18 yards out. You do not have a lot of space, or 18 and a half yards, excuse me. That is Liam Doyle standing over the ball. And the Aztecs do have a player laying on the ground in Camargo just in case Doyle wanted to keep it low. As he, of course, the wall's going to jump. Doyle has a go. And deflected out for a corner. No, goal kick. Here it is again. It took a deflection off a Cardinal player. Tristan Viviani on for San Diego State. Fletcher Bank and Leighton Purchase on for the Cardinal. So DeFlores out, Doyle out. As we're coming up on the final quarter hour of this one. Still looking for a goal either way. Shots now 18-3 Stanford. Castro's had to make six saves. Frank just one. Got Saros a nice play there. Uh, Fodre can't keep it in. Fletcher Bank into the box looking for purchase. That took a deflection, so a corner. Just the second. Make it third of the match for the Cardinal. 
And we'll have a stoppage of the clock here. The timer here at Larry Q. Kagan, it was momentarily at triple zeros. And they got it right now at 75-32. Agostinelli to take the corner kick. He has provided some wicked service this year. Outswinging ball looking for Hughes. And a foul on Stanford. We're having some issues with the clock here. Frank Anderson wants to get the correct time up there. Right now it's showing 75, 38. Yeah, and then I'm going to move it up to 76 on the dot. So just under 14 minutes to play now. Jackson Keel trying to play one through for Purchase. Leighton Purchase. Agostinelli. Here's Fisher. Mark Fisher. Yeah. Smith hasty with the deflection. San Diego State's defense has been stout. And a great job of defending as Castro watches that one take a deflection in front of him and go out for another Cardinal corner. It'll be Agostinelli again. Has a short option in Riley. Uh, looks like he's sending this one in. Headed out by Fodre. Chip back in. And Castro takes a foul and gives a little shove. Has some words with Keegan Hughes. The intensity pouring out here. You saw that elbow kind of come out a little bit, bit of a chicken wing there from Keegan Hughes, and Castro wasn't having any of that. Gastinelli trying to shape one out to bank, but Zapata had other ideas. Adnan gets there, but chance to counter. Can Bowen get there first? No, Keegan Hughes to the rescue for the Cardinal with the solid slide tackle. Looked like it could have been an incredible breakout for San Diego State, but Keegan Hughes making a great play. A veteran center back. It's a really nice center back pairing the Cardinal have. He and Noah Adnan. And there's Noah finding Tingy. Cardinal, again with more possession in the final third. They've lived here the last few minutes. Set up their base of operations, basically 25 yards out, and trying to make further encampments into the box, but still yet to break through the Cardinal. Take a quick break from conference play to go to UC Santa Barbara. That'll be a very tough match. The Gaucho is always a tough opponent, especially on the road. The Gaucho's raked 18th before the big Classico. Here on the farm, September 29th, I'll be on the call for that one here on Pac-12 Networks. Then they're at the Pacific Northwest Schools, number four Washington and Oregon State, at St. Mary's for another non-conference clash. Then at San Diego State on October 20th. 
That's what it looks like for the Cardinal. As we are approaching the final 10 minutes. And still searching for our first goal. Will it come? It didn't come Thursday night for Stanford or UCLA. Meanwhile, for San Diego State, this is what it looks like. They have a non-conference match, a local derby against UC San Diego next Saturday. And then they're home against number four, Washington. That'll be at Snapdragon Stadium. It's a new football stadium for San Diego State, recently constructed. Apparently, by all accounts, a really beautiful venue before they continue on with Oregon State that weekend. The San Diego State women's team will play at Snap Dragon Stadium as well. Be a throw in for San Diego State here in the 81st. Cardinal want to get a couple players on, including Liam Doyle. But of course, they can't sub on a San Diego State throw. That'll be a foul on Katsaros. And a free kick from about 30 plus yards out for either Agostinelli or Riley. It'll be Carlo Agostinelli who sets it down and steps over the ball. Agostinelli, can he provide a moment of magic for the Cardinal? Six Cardinal players in the box. Shapes one in. Keegan Hughes saved by Castro off the head of Hughes. Very nearly provided the go-ahead goal. And there's a Cardinal player down on the edge of the six-yard box. Oh, Jacob Castro, just another tremendous save. It is Fisher who is slow to get up. A Keegan Hughes. Very nearly made it 1-0. Great ball in by Agostinelli. Keegan Hughes and Castro at full stretch to parry that one away. Drop ball played here for the Cardinal as we get back to work. 82nd minute. Lofted into the box. Jackson Kill. Got the head to it, and there's Castro again. Jacob Castro looking like he could be the man of the match. Eight minutes away from a clean sheet in which he's had to make seven saves, and perhaps more down the stretch, and a couple of really good ones. I'd say three high, high-class saves. Switching it out to Tingy. Stanford searching for that goal. Keel can't bring it down. Apollinar blasting away the clearance. And San Diego State hoping to defend this one out. Subs will come on for the Cardinal in the shape of Liam Doyle and Shane DeFlores. So purchase out. Number 13, Shane DeFlores. And number 14, Lee. And Dorian. Keegan Tingey out. And for San Diego State, number six, Jordan Corbus. Jordan Corbus has come on for San Diego State. Not quite 11 behind the ball for the Aztecs. But close to it. This is Bank. Left up top for Fisher. Takes the shot off the crossbar. Oh, so close again for the Cardinal. Nice ball up top. Fisher able to control it. Calm there, composed, and just a little too high. That is the 20th shot of the match for Stanford. They're working on a 35 match weekend and no goals to show for it. 
Uh, things really clamped down in conference play, and the Cardinal finding that out here. Fletcher Bank, nicely done and too far ahead of Agostinelli. As we work our way into the 85th minute. <laughs> Sub for the Aztecs. And that'll be Austin Brummett. Austin Brummett. And Stanford not happy that this sub is uh, taking as long as it is. They're, they're saying stop the clock. <laughs> and in the final five minutes, the clock will stop on a sub for the team that is leading. But we're goalless here. Stanford probably feels like it should be ahead. Clary, headed away by Katsaros and Fodre providing some much needed extra yardage to get it out of there for the Aztecs. Good clearance by CJ Fodre. He's now having to defend for the Aztecs as they try to get out of this one with at least a point. Adnan, four minutes to go now and change. Hughes. It's Cleary into the box. Bank gets it back, working on Bowen, chipping one in, and volleyed out of there by Cretier. Hello. See some of that composure for the Nice France native. Some of that Europa League composure. It's Doyle, shot is blocked, De Flores on it. Riley. Adnan, headed out. A little more than three minutes to play. Looking back post, Castro. Did he keep the ball in front of the end line? No, it'll be a corner kick. Try all he might. They will concede the corner. Agostinelli racing over to that near corner flag. Fans really getting into this one now as we work our way towards the death of this match. Agostinelli, arm goes down, ball goes up, back post. Bank. And cleared out of there, but not far away. Fletcher Bank working on the right side. Just over the head of a leaping Liam Doyle, almost providing a perfect service. <laughs> chance after chance for the Cardinal. Knocking on the doorstep, but San Diego State withstanding wave after wave of attack to this point. They got to defend out another two minutes. Castro on the goal kick, and it, they're going to stop the clock. Yeah. Taking a little too much time. And they'll start it back up now. One of these teams is playing for a win. The other's playing for a draw, which is what we normally see. Nothing wrong with it. Agostinelli, oh, nice bit of work there defensively by Blake Bowen. And San Diego State in no rush to take this throw in. And Frank Anderson has shown a willingness to stop the clock here in the waning moments. The Cardinal back on it. It's Fisher carrying. There is one minute remaining in the second half. 
We're south of 60 seconds. Throw in San Diego State. Deleuze. With the throw in. Cardinal. With Cleary. And just about 20 seconds to go. Will it be another goalless draw for the Cardinal? Can San Diego State salvage a point from the weekend? Agostinelli, last service in. And nine. Oh, Castro got a piece of it. What a save by Jacob Castro. San Diego State, 2-0. And uh, they won one nothing the previous match against California Baptist in non-conference play. So they've had back-to-back -back shutouts. UCLA in the blue uniforms with the gold numbers right there, going from our right to our left. Cal wearing white today with blue numbers. Temperature in.